Doubles is confusing. It can often feel like a random, overwhelming, chaotic mess to people who aren't familiar with the mode. I used to be garbage at doubles in Smash 4, but after putting a lot of time and effort into it with the new game, I think I finally learned enough to make a video about it. First, let me explain what doubles is for those who aren't aware. Instead of 1v1s, it's 2v2s, like tennis, or for you gamers who don't know what that is, think Wii Sports Tennis. When you see doubles at tournaments, it's usually just a side event, with singles being the main attraction. Still, it's extremely fun and worth Worth learning in my opinion, and you don't even need to be amazing at singles to have a great doubles team. The stage, character, stock, and time rules are usually the same as they are in singles. The only unique things to be aware of are team attack being on, which prevents the overpowered cheese that you see online sometimes, and allows for helpful strategies like healing and saving. Additionally, you and your teammate share each other's stocks in case someone dies early. There's also the fact that your attacks do less damage, but from my experience, that's hardly noticeable. Still, it can't hurt to know. Alright, now let's learn. The first thing most people new to doubles will notice is the sheer amount of stuff happening on screen. Instead of only having to pay attention to you and your opponent, there's a partner and a second opponent to worry about too. Because of this, my first tip for anyone starting out with dubs is to try and focus on the entire screen instead of just your separate 1v1, at least once in a while. This way, you're likely to find opportunities for either free or relatively easy damage. Let's say someone is beating up your teammate and they hit them with a laggy smash attack. As long as you're aware and in a good enough position, i.e. not off stage or getting attacked yourself, you can easily head on over there and punish them for it. Similarly, if your partner is getting backed into a corner and losing stage control, you can hit the opponent away. Even if you miss, it could potentially be because they had to avoid you and your teammate will have escaped, which is a win in my book. Not only is utilizing the whole stage good for getting free punishes, but it also opens up the possibility for team combos. If your partner throws or hits an opponent towards you, it usually means they want you to follow up, which again, if you're in position, is totally doable. Even if your teammate doesn't intentionally hit them to you and you simply notice an opponent flying in your direction, you can still combo off it. Try to consistently stay near your partner to pick up on these situations more often and effectively. You don't want to be too close to your partner as that can lead to you hitting them, so try to stay about a roll distance away from each other. As a side note, do your best to keep the opponents separated so they can't use this strategy much themselves. SSBM Tutorials made an excellent video on doubles where he talked about how the best position to be in in teams is this, where you both have stage control, while the worst is this, so strive to replicate the good one throughout all your matches. But how can I always focus on the whole screen to find these golden opportunities for damage? My eyes don't have that kind of power. This is valid, and I'll also add that sometimes you won't even need to pay attention to your teammate. Like if you're both destroying opponents in separate 1v1s, what's the point? My suggestion is to shift your focus from yourself and your single opponent, mainly when there's downtime. After finishing a combo, landing a strong hit, grabbing someone, or starting a long animation, there's usually a decent window before you can hit the opponent again. Instead of using this time attempting to win neutral, try looking over at your teammate instead to see if you can help them out. Additionally, if you're not in a separate 1v1, then you pretty much have to focus on your teammate and their opponent or opponents. Intentionally waiting for and punishing these openings is often referred to as playing support. Again, I'm not saying you should never play separate 1v1s in doubles. Especially if you're both competent and neutral, this might honestly be a good thing. But if an opportunity comes when free damage is just sitting there on a silver platter, your teammate really needs help or anything in between, having the awareness to deal with these situations can be helpful for winning. Next, I want to talk about team combos. I threw this term out earlier, but what exactly are they and how do you do them? Well, they're actually quite simple for the most part. The easiest team combo involves taking the knockback inflicted on an opponent by your teammate and following up while they're still in hit stun. This isn't too difficult if you're able to react to or predict the knockback of your partner's move. Oh, Bowser's side being at zero. That means they're probably going to end up right around here. Got him. You can even follow up with a combo starter or strong attack of your own to maximize damage output, as you can see here. Side note, try not to follow up too early or late when doing team combos. Too early is as the opponent is still flying, and too late is after their hit stun ends. The more difficult but potentially rewarding form of team combos comes in the form of ping pong. It starts out like any other team combo, only instead of following up with a simple hit or solo combo starter, one teammate will hit the opponent back to the other person in hopes of starting some back and forth action. This can last for however long the team decides, or until someone is interrupted by the opponent not being comboed. As a rule of thumb, it's usually best to end the combo with a strong finisher when it looks like the other opponent's about to reach you. Now, now, back and forth combos are a bit harder to do in Ultimate than previous Smash games because of the rapid fast knockback. Thankfully though, there are some ways to make them easier. Use moves and have your teammate use moves that are easy to combo off of. Wolf's forward throw sends at a very low angle and has a sizable amount of hit stun, so if his teammate is aware of this, following up shouldn't be much of an issue. Palatina's Nair shoots the opponent at a predictable angle and lasts for quite a while, so her player's partner will have plenty of time to position themselves to follow up. Both of these are examples of what I like to call good doubles moves.
moves. Good doubles moves are usually easy to combo off of and big. They send at a lowish angle without going too far, are relatively low lag so you can do another one quickly if you want to hit the opponent back and forth, and have decent hit stun. Try to familiarize yourself with the knockback angles of you and your teammates moves so you know what to use and expect in a match. I've found that I improvise most of my team combos since I don't have a static partner, but it can't hurt to research and practice optimal ones that do insane amounts of damage. These can especially be useful for 2v1s. Some throws have invincibility that allow for follow-ups as well. Charizard and Sonic both have down throws that are invincible throughout most of their animation. If a teammate runs up and attacks during these throws, it'll only hit the opponent. Thus, they're great for setting up kill confirms or lots of damage. Now, if you don't have one of these invincible throws and you land a grab, you'll have several options. You could throw the opponent to start a solo combo, which your teammate could pick up on after you finish, throw them to your teammate and start a team combo, or hold the opponent so your teammate can run up and hit them with a strong move, which is commonly done at kill percent. But if your partner is distracted and unable to combo, you'll usually just want to toss the opponent off the level to help them out. Sending someone off stage to set up a 2v1 is an amazing double strategy anyway, so try to use it often. It's also good to throw an enemy off stage if your teammate is already ledge pressuring the other opponent, as it allows you to give the team you're fighting the worst possible stage control. Next, I want to briefly touch on verbal communication, as I consider it to be at least somewhat important in many double situations. Sometimes you and your teammate won't always be on the same page. For example, if Joe is teaming with an inkling and inkling up throws, Joe might not be sure if he should follow up from the up throw itself, or after his partner's true follow up. Let's say he tries to combo out of the up throw, but inkling also goes for an attack. All of a sudden, Joe hits his teammate and it's not a good look. So in Joe's mind, he starts thinking, oh, they're gonna up throw up air, I'll just follow up after the up air. But in his teammate's mind, they're thinking, he's just gonna follow up after my up throw, so I won't go for up air anymore. Later, inkling up throws, Joe waits for the up air, and nothing happens, since they both think the other player will follow up. This time, instead of a friendly fire incident, it was a missed opportunity. All because this team forgot to do one thing, communicate. The team could have preemptively decided what to do in the situation before the match. Joe could have said something after hitting his teammate, like, I'll just let you follow up, to prevent it from happening again. The inkling player could have said, I got it, after grabbing so their partner would have known exactly what to expect. But that's not what happened, and it just didn't work out. I see these kinds of mistakes happen a decent amount of time with new teams, and it's unfortunate. Look, you don't have to talk about the weather or anything that stupid. Just do yourself and your teammate a favor by letting each other know important information. If you need help, swallow your pride and tell them. If you want your teammate to start throwing opponents to you more often, let them know. If your partner doesn't know the knockback angle of one of your moves and is having a hard time comboing off of it, give them the tails. And look, I get it, you don't want to always be talking since the match in front of you is important and requires lots of mental focus. This is fine, and I'd say I'm honestly not talking 90% of the time in most of my doubles matches. But if a similar situation to that inkling example happens, you have a good strategic idea, or anything in general needs to be said, a few words can really go a long way, either during the match or in between games. As you get better with your teammate or at teams in general, you won't need to verbally communicate as frequently. But especially if you're both new to teaming with each other, it can really help out. So those are what I believe to be the basics of doubles, and you're sure to go far if you put them into practice. However, there are still a few more situations in 2v2s that I want to cover. Thankfully, they're pretty easy to explain, so I'm just gonna go into lightning mode and list off everything that I feel is worth mentioning. 2v1s and 1v2s. In 2v1 situations where there's just a single opponent left, you should almost never approach them. They have to come to you. I mean, you're winning after all. Also, if they do something punishable, that's a free opening for a potentially huge team combo. Shielding is an effective strategy in 2v1 as it forces the opponent to grab, which is almost always punishable, asterisk. We'll get back to that in a second. In 1v2s, when you're the one in a pickle, try to switch up your target as much as possible so the other team can't read where you're going. Make an effort to try and only hit them with safe attacks as well. It's hard, but if you're unpredictable enough, you could eventually force a 1v1. Punishing grabs. Grabs can be a bit tricky to punish. To do it, you'll want to hit the opponent either before or after your teammate is tossed, as all throws have at least some invincibility throughout their duration. Plus, you don't want to inflict any extra damage on your partner. Pretty much every throw in the game has some lag though, and if you want to be super nerdy, you can use ultimate frame data to see the exact frames an opponent is vulnerable after each one. If you decide to check the side out, you may also notice a red spot on some throws, which represents a hitbox. Some throws in this game are designed to hit players away who try to challenge them. A handful of these have insane knockback too, like Mario's and Incineroar's, which are kill moves for some reason. Consider researching these scary throw hitboxes before playing against certain characters in doubles, or at 
at least respect throws that look like they could hit you. Space yourself around or shield these throws to punish as soon as the animation finishes. Ryu's and Ken's down throws shield break though, so don't block against those. Also, the game won't let you punish a grab with a grab. Only use regular attacks. Double ledge trapping. You usually only do this in 2v1s, but it can apply situationally in 2v2s. Have someone stand at neutral get up distance and someone else at roll distance, so you can cover as many options as possible. When deciding who to put where, I recommend considering two factors. Which character slash player punishes neutral get up harder, and which player is closest to dying. If you're both at healthy percent, just have the character who punishes neutral get up better in front and the other covering roll. Unless someone is particularly confident in catching this option, in which case sure, have them in front. Or if time is limited and you can't position your characters quickly, just stick with the spots you're already in. But if one player is close to dying, you'll usually want to have them at roll distance, in case the opponent does a gimmicky option from ledge that could potentially kill. Projectiles. If you and your partner both have annoying projectiles, try harassing the other team with them at the same time occasionally. It can be obnoxious. Speaking of projectiles, long distance ones can save teammates from far away. If your teammate gets buried and robs off stage, he'll still be able to shoot a laser to prevent a follow-up, for example. Don't play aggressive at high percent, especially near your last stock. I don't think I need much of an explanation for this. Just camp and only go for guaranteed follow-ups or punishes without being in range of an opponent. Making risky plays could get you screwed over. Shield breaks. If one player gets a shield break, don't mindlessly both go for the helpless opponent at the same time. Establish who will take care of the other opponent while someone charges their smash attack or whatever. Healing. I don't really have much personal experience with this strategy since none of my moves can heal, and I've never teamed with a healer. But from what I've seen in top level matches, it looks like most of the teams that tend to do this only recover health when both the opponents are separated, that and during 2v1s to be efficient and bait an approach, which can make it really frustrating for the one. Go for it, I see nothing wrong with the strategy, as long as you're not leaving yourself vulnerable. Targeting. If you're playing against a team with a Bowser, DK, K rule, or any other huge characters, consider targeting them. Their escape options aren't the best, and they're super easy to combo due to their size. Also, if you're playing against a team with one player who's substantially worse than the other, try focusing on them to make the match easier. Don't give up or throw the match. It's doubles, so if you lose, you may not care, but your teammate might, so do your best in every single match. Being a whole stock down isn't the end of the world, as long as you can get them into a 1v2 situation by the end. And that's about it. In summary, focus on the entire match, stay close to your teammate so you can punish free openings and utilize team combos, learn your best moves to team combo off of, communicate effectively, then all the other little things I talked about. I love doubles and hope at least some of you guys find yourselves feeling the same way. As you improve at this mode, you'll start to learn a lot more than just what's covered here. But hopefully this is enough to get you started. Give doubles a try and let me know how you like it. Until next time, see ya!